are we going to see the Warwick banner or not? It's that pop. Panty, Pantheon's out. Oh, there. oh there's yeah. the Warwick. There it is. <laughs> well, it's actually happened, you know. Vizichachi in the promotion Got tournament. Pulled out the poppy yeah. band. Pulled it out. We've seen a lot of poppy scares coming in lately. Lucian will be first for Lion, so they're going to try to get that bot lane of Maple Street and Dodo something they like, knowing that it might be off because they're not two members of the current team. They're going to give them what they want, as we may see a NAR pick up here from Vizisachi on the other side. Yeah, I think uh, because they ban Poppy, they want to pick Maokai or some of those uh, weaker laners that Poppy would counter. So mm. I'm pretty sure that's why they, they also want the Lucian first pick as well. Well, Lissandra's still up, and we saw an OGN. Lissandra does exceptionally well. So much. Maokai. Yeah, really good against NAR, and it's a flex pick as well. Yeah. Also very interesting that they're going for the Lucian first here. Typically, when we've seen on 420 the games that have taken place so far, it's normally the Corky that's prioritized. Of course, Lucian does have that early, uh, like, kind of larger laning presence. The fact that Janna's up too, that Lucian Janna lane can be a real problem for Corky pre six. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually surprised that they picked uh, Corky in their first rotation. I mean, they wanted to be ambiguous with their picks, maybe, but uh, I mean, you already know that they pick Lucian, and they're not going to be going for Corky unless they play randomly mid. Yeah. Um, so I'm surprised they didn't pick up Janna or, or maybe uh, one of the better contested supports. Can teams somewhat get themselves into trouble coming in saying this is what we want, no matter what they do, we'll kind of pick these anyways? Oh, kind of with that so. Corky pick. That's like the CLG blue strat. You know, you just go in with the one strategy and then you tunnel on that strategy and then it all falls apart and you're, you're screwed. Yep. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, so we actually get the Aurelia on the other side. Saying you're thinking Maokai, what's this kind of turn the tables for you? Uh, I mean, Aurelia is like a pretty decent pick at a Gnar. Uh, it's kind of an even lane depending on the jungler. So I, I, th I guess because they saw that Gnar was picked up, they, you can't pick Maokai into Gnar. And, like, you have to 2v1 it at that point. So maybe they're not confident in their 2v1 um, because, of course, they lost their team captain. Uh, maybe they're not confident in like, the shot calling and the yeah. lane rotation. So uh, they're probably just going to play this, this this game standard and put the Aurelia against the Gnar. I am really surprised that Janna has fallen this far down the draft already. Ready. But the Braum pickup with that Nar, if you're looking for a massive yeah, CC yep. combo, mm. that could be devastating. You could win the game in one shot. And also, the Jin Zhao. This is a jungler I have not seen on this patch yet at all. At all. Uh, I mean, he, he's like, <laughs> he, he's okay because the, he can sustain up in the jungle and he has some, he's really brutal level 2 and level 3 gank. If he gets in on you and you don't have flash up, you're just dead instantly. Yep. Um, but the one problem with Zen has always been that your only option is to go in the fight. And once you're in, you're in. There's no way. There's no way. You have to all and hope you're out of it. Yeah. So it makes <laughs> it makes fighting over wards and things like that really difficult. Um, I, I, I'm not I'm not too big of a fan of it. Also seeing the Alistair pick up. That's yeah, a I was just going to mention that. for like a melee champion like Zinjiao to play against. I'm also a little concerned just because Zinjiao, in terms of ults, doesn't have great synergy with with Nar and Braum. If you're knocking everybody away, mm. that Syndra pick up at the end. That's one of Power of Evil's most like prominent champions. That guy plays a mean Syndra. Syndra's also a very good pick in the LeBlanc as well. You can uh, hit her, hit LeBlanc with the stun as she's coming in, and you can actually stop her from shifting back on her. I remember Pobelter doing that in the LCS. We were saying, oh man, crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so it looks like we have our composition set up from each side. We do have a bit of poke coming in from Unicorns of Love. Obviously, that safety we saw, we talked about LeBlanc maybe picked up, or the Lissandras. It was a LeBlanc, but we are going to have Lee Sin versus Zin in that jungle. We'll be right back after this commer quick commercial break for more Intel Extreme Masters League of Legends from San Jose.
back to the Intel Extreme Masters here in San Jose. I'm Joe Miller, joined here on the Casa Desk with none other than Lee Demon Smith and Joshua Jatley. So, guys, great to be back in this little tri-cast. You know, it's yeah. been a, uh, a couple of years by now since we actually first tried this one out, and hopefully we got better since then. Well, I yeah, I mean, you, you posted a tweet of it the other day. It's it like, was old. I'm glad you sorted your hair out now. It's yeah. all good. It's Joe has his hair much again. Mine grew you, back. You got yours grew back as well, yeah. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah, the IPR5. It's, we're all back here in the Intel Extreme Masters San Jose. And obviously, we have some fantastic matches ahead of us. Best of threes all the way. Can't complain about that. Yeah, and we should talk straight about this first game because obviously, picks and bans already coming down. Jack, were there any surprises in there? I want to see how the Sinjao plays out. Only because I've actually been seeing a fair bit of it when I'm watching like other regions play on the 420 patch. He is one of the sleeper junglers because he has fairly good sustain. And I want to see what his early gank presence is like, and particularly which jungle enchantment he builds. Whether he goes for the devourer with the attack speed or the warrior with the attack damage. Because I think both could have their uses here. And that's one of the big things, obviously. That's the main focus for patch 4.20. It is it is clearly all about the jungle. What do we think here? Obviously, we've got Kikius coming in. Kikius is, for those that don't know, is probably the most veteran player on this team by a mile. Back in 2011, we were at World Cyber Games, and we were casting Kikius in, uh, well, I can't even remember the Polish team name back then. It was... It was XMYM, I think they were. X yeah. XGBT. 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 Yeah. But it had the MYM it, yeah. players in it. That was it. Well, that's what yeah. it was. I mean, it, it became the MYM team. Obviously, they went on, got into the LCS. But Kikius was back there. He's been through about 25 teams since then, all around the side. But they're back in the LCS. Yeah. And this is a very experienced team. That man on your screen there, Maple Street, we saw him coming out in his beautiful uh, entrance to where he nearly fell off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, Maple Street Dodo, this bot lane, it's a completely new bot lane. Obviously, we heard uh, Snoopy talking about it, how the fact that Naz uh, Nazgul is not there, and he's yeah. normally the shot caller for Lion Gaming, that's got to be a big impact on this team, surely. It's going to be a big mystery how Lion Gaming performs in here, because believe it or not, they're one of the older teams in League of Legends mm. as well, as far as how long they've been around. These guys competed in the International Wildcard Tournament in 2013. They've competed in WCG, the last League of Legends WCG. You could say they actually did okay, mm. exceeded expectations there, and there's almost no expectations for them right now. The fact that they're using different bottom lane, the fact that they will be playing in English, which a lot of them should be able to do. Uh, Sia, in particular, was a North American solo queue player dropping in and out of the top ranks whenever he was playing on the server. So they're going to have some experience right there. And they're going up against the wildcard team, right? Unicorns of Love. They had to ban Poppy to try and control the situation. I'm excited to see these guys play here. And that's the great thing about Unicorns of Love, you know, fresh into the LCS. We know they've got the calibre, but how much of a calibre? It's nice to see a team coming through that almost is an, an unknown package overall. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are tipping Unicorns of Love, especially with all the changes uh, and, you know, certain recent changes, you know, with Fnatic falling to, uh, to pieces and what have you. Tipping these guys to actually do really, really well in the spring split of the LCS next season. All starts here, though. This is where we can see exactly how good they are on a brand new patch, which is mm -hmm. always a difficult thing. Like, it'd be silly for us to make any kind of assumptions about any of the teams that are actually in this tournament, whether it's TSM, Alliance, Cloud9, or any of the other teams in the quarterfinals. But we are going to be getting into game number one of Lion Gaming and the Unicorns of Love. And I really just want to see how these teams adapt to the level one jungle. So for those of you that haven't been keeping up with the jungle starts that have been going on, most junglers would start at the Krugs, which is what the double golems are called now, called now, or the Gromp, which is where the white used to be, or it's a frog right here. However, in some OGN games and in a lot of North American and European scrims, the bottom lane will take one of the camps so the AD carry can go to lane at level two which then creates a very predictable jungle route by the other player. So obviously it's going to be this evolving chess match, and I'm just wondering where it starts here. Are we already on the second or third step? Are we literally just going to see junglers with a standard start and no jungle invading? Early on, they're really just trying to scout out where everyone is with the defensive lines. Now, I'm very sad that the game designers didn't pull through Freak's Best invention, honestly, that a lot of people didn't really know about, which was, of course, was Barry that? White on the left and Barry White on the right. I mean, they, they were wow. the best names ever. But unfortunately, now they're just Gromps, which, yes. you know, not quite got the same ring about them. But here we go. It is going to be a Gromp start, as you can see. It looks like for Porky and Thayak. It's going to be, a, yeah. obviously, a good, strong leash. He's going to probably smite that start of that one. And as you said, 
Ooh, this could be a different yeah. one. The so, jungle starts are yeah. being dictated by the bottom lanes here because both of the bottom lanes are wanting to take the AD carry for level two. The way this works, if you guys want to do it at home, is the support, since they start with nothing but health potions, pretty much, if you do the right mastery, you can get four potions. You can see Dodo 7 has three biscuits and a mana pot. They just tank the damage while the AD carry kills it. They go away right at the end, give all the experience to the AD carry, and use the health potions to recover. They end up missing one or two minions in lane, but the fact that the AD carry is level two would win them the lane if the other team didn't end up doing it. Sometimes they share. We'll see what they do. They're going to share. Yeah, sharing that one out, and that will bring Lion into that bottom lane and this is a really i think a, a factor for line that we can't really say just yet what's going to happen there whether they're going to be dominant in lane you know being a pair that have been together for a while now or whether unicorns of love are going to have the strong point there we see thayak actually getting his blue buff at level two now after his little start over by the grump kick is also on his red on the top side with that sin chow and you really have to track health potions on junglers on their first clear as well. Oftentimes, they will back after three camps, but a jungler like Sin Zhao would have the, sin the sustain to be able to either go for some early counter jungling or really pick his own path. But as you said, Joe, yes, if there's going to be an advantage here for Lion, it might end up coming from the bottom lane duo. And let's talk about the mid lane because we haven't really had a good look at them. Sia versus Power of Evil. Now, Power of Evil came through as only see somewhat of a superstar in Europe. Someone that I am very excited to see if they do get through, if he can face off against Bjergsen, but he's got to get through Lion right now. And this is something we've seen a lot of over in OGN. We've seen the LeBlanc versus Syndra battles. We saw a fair amount of it back in season four as well, or 2014 season. Yeah, it's I just a keep very seeing... tricky, tricky matchup, because if you miss that stun, you are pretty screwed. I pretty much just only see LeBlanc win it, right? You, you can get pa by with Cinder. I've seen Voiboy have some really good Cinder games against it, but then by the end of the game, someone will dodge one of the stuns and go instantly kill him. Yeah. Now that LeBlanc doesn't have the silence, obviously the matchup is a good bit more balanced, but we'll have to see oh. here. Kick is going to get some help, and a stun is landed. Stun is down, and can they actually lock him up? There's a W coming out, and Kick is getting in there. The chain was already down, and see it? Not actually burning a flash there, which is, yeah, I suppose, the best that could really come out of that situation. First gank coming down, Seiya is able to just walk back. It would have been nice if Seiya could have somehow burned his distortion before that gank happened, if Kick is wanted to actually have a chance. The fact that he had LeBlanc passive and his distortion up made it pretty much impossible. And if Kikis would have continued the gank, he would have actually been chained under turret range and ended up giving up a kill. So it was a well-played counter. Oh, it's a good gank down the bottom, though. Can they lock on towards Hillisang? Hillisang gets away. Can they turn it around? Vardag's going to put the pressure down on towards Dodo. Will get the stun, but there's no damage to follow through. And that was just a simple reaction to the gank in the mid lane kick is returning back to the jungle in that top lane has yet to go back and buy now he's going to go back he's been a long time in that jungle before buying yeah and we also see the first of the the new items here at intel extreme masters coming out rangers trailblazer for thayak jack what is that what we're expecting to see from a lease in and how do you think that's all going to really evolve i'm going to say on this patch every single jungle will build rangers trailblazer aside from warwick only because it gives you the reduced smite cooldown. All the pros have been doing this, A, because the sustain is good, but B, you just get more smite buffs. It's better for counter jungling, it's better for clearing, it's better for ganking because you're a higher level and a higher health. So while it's at a 45 second cooldown for smite, once you get that upgrade, everyone's going to be doing Trailblazer. There was Thayak actually walking in. Ward was already down, though, from Unicorns of Love's side in the bottom of that river. And we also see the first time that the Scuttle Crab goes down. And obviously that gives you then pretty much free vision plus the speed boost to get in there for a quicker gank. Crab control. At this point in the game, the first crab is really easy to take. Honestly, I don't think it's that important. Generally, junglers shouldn't be ganking through the river anyway because it is usually littered with wards. As far as Lee Sin is concerned, it's actually a great tool for him to sustain since it doesn't hit back and he can heal up a little bit on it. It gives very small amounts of experience in gold. So that was just kind of a thing he was doing to maybe even set up this gank. Kiki is on a bit of counter jungle in himself, but you can see Thayak is waiting in the wings off the side there. Can he land anything on Power of Evil? See, it goes in, lands the leash. Oh. That's going to catch on towards him. They should lock him down. This could well be first blood. Power of Evil, though, gets away. The flash was burned. But wow, they should have had him, I feel that. I feel like Power of Evil was incredibly greedy with his flash right there. I think if he, he could have easily flashed earlier and 
not had to back immediately afterwards. And likewise, I feel like Sia was expecting him to be more free with his flash. Otherwise, I think he would have used the Ignite. That was just a strange gank situation. Well, it means that that middle lane should be a bit more of a catch-up for Sia since Paravil had to return home. We talked earlier about this bottom lane, that the fact it might be the strongest part of Lion's game just due to the fact they brought in Maple Street and Dodo 8. We'll see about that. Currently, there are a few CS ahead, but by all intents and purposes, pretty level on that front. And there is Thayak actually spotting out that ward, thanks to the buff from the Raptors. I love the Raptor buff in the jungle. It is probably my favorite thing to smite, especially with Ranger's Trailblazer, because it gives you so many ward killing options. Unfortunately, since he consumed the Raptor buff, he didn't know that pink ward was in the brush. If he had still had it, it would have actually alerted him and he would have went to check for it. So uh, he's completely Ooh. spotted here by Power Beaver Land. He would be getting counter gank, but if they just send the entire kitchen sink at him, it won't happen. Yeah, there's a lot of movement here for Lion. They've got obviously Aurelia coming down. You can see him just above the red buff. Looks like he's going to return back instead. Dodo's going to get locked up, and he goes down just destroyed by the combo of Power of Evil and Kikis. Pink Ward bait at that point. It was just a big mistake by Dodo. No communication from the team right there. And this could very well just give the first dragon to Unicorns of Love because Alistair was incredibly risky doing that at level four as Alistair. However, they have managed to put a bit more presence on that dragon area. And it seems like they've done enough here, Lion, to stop Unicorns of uh, Love actually finishing that one off. Thayak once again coming around and able to switch things up. Meanwhile, Vardax and Maple Street going a little bit head-to-head -head down in that bottom lane, trying to keep control of that lane or to gain control of that lane, really, because they've neither of them had solid control of it. That reflected in the CS that's still very, very close. We'll have to see when the first shop trip comes because Corky and Lucian with different item builds will actually hit somewhat differential power spikes. But to kind of go back to the dragon, we jumped the gun there. We're like, oh yeah, early game kill, eight minutes into the game. Time to do dragon. Mm. We're going to have to recalibrate as well as the players when exactly the dragon can be taken. Now on this patch, there are some games you can play with dragon if you can cancel his attacks properly or you're playing the right champion to take almost no damage from it. But if you're a little bit pressured by the enemy team, that goes out the window and the dragon will demolish you early on in the game as far as how much damage he was doing. And that's what happened to Unicorns of Love there. They weren't directing the dragon's auto attacks properly. They weren't bouncing it at all. So when Lion showed a little bit of defense, they had to back away straight away because they would have lost a fight even though Dodo was already dead. And, that, and that's one of the things we need to look at as well as we move in, more for the teams themselves, because there's a hell of a lot of debate. It's like whether it's worth defending that first dragon. Obviously, you think back to the Gambit days. It's not something they always used to do. It's like, well, we don't, we'll either take it constantly or we'll just ignore it. Well, you can't do that now because obviously the bonus builds up, the patches uh, brought in this five stack option. But the question is, at 10 minutes, 8% damage, is it that big of a deal? And that's really the argument. Can you get more gold from maybe pushing a tower in a top lane and then going to get dragons later on or just giving up that first dragon? It's, it's interesting to see, especially as this tournament progresses, because we haven't seen a great deal of, a, obviously, A over in the OGN that's happened, yep. obviously, last, this week. And here at the Intel Extreme Masters San Jose, just how these teams are going to affect it. Because there's always going to be some sneaky tactic that people find that works. It's just like the perfect meta at the moment. Mm -hmm. Sia is stunned up, but Power of Evil is not going to be able to follow that one through. So we'll back off. We really... I'm so excited to see how this tournament is going to develop, honestly, with Me all too. these changes. Both from a team perspective, because we have a lot of new stuff to look at. We haven't seen Cloud9 in the wild. TSM is apparently really, really good right now. We get to see Reckless on Alliance. Unicorns of Love, who we're seeing right now, potentially a dark horse to be one of the top teams in Europe next split. And all the new gameplay stuff, so funny oh. happened. And we missed some action when we talk about it. Yeah, Power of Evil there, not able to get away from that. And a lot of crowd control coming out when you factor in that level 7 Lee 6, uh, level 7 Lee 6, level 7 Lee Sin, who could come in there, kick you back. Alistair, of course, as Dodo was once again on top of that pink ward that cost him first blood earlier. You were wondering if there was a, a bit of deja vu about to creep in from that one, but actually they were able to get across, get themselves that killer. Now Kikis needs to be kept. Well, that's a great flash. Last second to get away from the Lee CQ has to actually use his ultimate there to keep Dodo away. 
and this is where Unicorns of Love needs to put pressure on Maple Street. Alistair should not be allowed to roam around like that. And they're going to try that. They're going to go on towards it. One more shot. There it is. They get the kill. Maple Street goes down. And honestly, going back to kick is his awesome play. I think he was completely distracting them. They could and should have gone for Dragon back there. But instead, he put pressure on that mid lane turret. And they turned around and they had to deal with him. You're absolutely right there. And honestly, Unicorns of Love, even though they got caught out of position, did make the right counter play right there and it's going to be a bit of a back and forth like you said that dragon is a big curiosity when are they going to be going for it because the judging of the damage from that dragon and exactly when you can take it hasn't really been perfected yet oh and power of evil may become a target once again see that Sayak is waiting however in the top lane porky taking a lot of damage here gets the stun off onto Vizzy Chachi but there's not enough damage there to actually finish off the kill Thayak is still waiting in there power of evil gets a good stun down but will it be enough there is a big knight going down power of okay. evil does get kicked and they trade off one for one if you're gonna do it, that's one way of getting the trade with LeBlanc. I still feel like Sia ends up winning that trade despite him being the first one to fall. Getting the gold from the assist pool as well as the kill gold will be their little advantage. Knowing Lee Sin is down on ultimate though, is now the time for the dragon? They have the tankiness and potentially the sustain to do so. Yeah, very well played. You can see Maple Street having to dash away from Vardax. This is a one of the battles that we were interested to see how this one was going to work out right now. Hillisang's pushing him, kicking oh, his no. in, dashes, flashes on him and just melts him where he stands. Maple Street had no chance. Not once he got hit by the Braum slow and Kikis was in just the right position. To go back to an earlier question we had about jungle items as well, he's gone with the Devour enchantment. So he is now stacking up magic damage on hit. This is my favorite Sin Jiao build, actually. He's an attack speed based champion. He will go full tank after this, but still be doing a lot of damage. Let's see how they tank this Dragon Aggro, and let's see a steal attempt from Fiak. Oh, he's going to go in there. Oh! And he's managed to steal it away as well. And uh, I was going to say he gets away from it, but couldn't quite escape. But one kill for that first Dragon. Is that going to be worth it for them? Yeah, I think a steal at this point in the game is absolutely worth it. However, the rest of the team is falling pretty far behind. Something we haven't touched on whatsoever is this top lane of Visichachi and Porky. The Gnar is destroying Aurelia. We don't see Gnar that often. It's kind of because of this. Yeah, and we don't see Gnar that often because he's just banned half the time. That's, that's one of the new things that, honestly, obviously, he wasn't available at Worlds. Power of Evil once again getting caught out. We talked about this. It's a tricky combo in that mid lane. And this tower in this top lane, Porky's, is going down. Visi Chachi, one more strong push. And maybe this is going to be the Siege Minion line that comes through. Will be the one to force it back. Hillisan caught out of position. He's going to get locked up. Fayak goes in, just forces him away as he dashes back to Power of Evil. The pressure very much on, and it's Unicorns of Love that are starting to apply it. Oh, there is a stun coming down. Fizzy Chachi is going to transform. Actually, he's going to knock Porky against the wall. This is surely a kill. A last second flash, though, from Porky. Gets him back far enough behind the tower. You have to feel that Fizzy Chachi might have been able to follow through on that one and get the kill. Yeah, I just think it was great flash timing by Porky to get away because once he'd lost the damage from his leap there, flashing in for an auto is pretty dangerous knowing Aureli has the stun up, but he's getting his job done regardless because he was able to get the solo turret kill. He's up 50 CS, and despite not getting that kill, it's not like he's somehow losing control of the lane. At the moment, Power of Evil, good stun straight on to Sia. Beautifully delivered there. He has been landing them very well early on. Of course, he caught Thayak as he came in from the side. Very good reaction times from him. Power of Evil, despite the fact he is up against a very active Woo. mid lane that are trying their best to double combo him, is doing a good job of staying alive. We wanted to see how good Power of Evil was in the mid lane, and I think we're going to get a chance to here this weekend because I'm expecting to see a lot of him here. And you can also see how the matchup has fundamentally changed between LeBlanc and Syndra with the loss of the silence. During the all-ins, LeBlanc has to be so much more cautious and it gives so much more flexibility to the Syndra player, Power of Evil in this instance, to counter with stuns and get his ultimate off. He no longer has to do it all in a quarter of a second. He can make sure to land the spells in the right time. He actually gets the Raptor but doesn't go and check the brush. That's an unfortunate read of that ability. He's looking for the ward. He didn't check it in the brush. 
which is for me where you'd go uh, yeah. <laughs> when you were going to try with that one. Either way, he's going to back away onto his blue buff. That will, of course, be gifted over to Power of Evil. Let's check in with his bottom lane as well. And since those couple of kills, I say a couple, I mean, it's a 3 0 0 Corky now. Trinity Force done. Only the BF Sword and Pickaxe for Maple Street. And whilst it was in the early game a very, very even lane, that has certainly changed in favor of Unicorns of Love. And now they're just going to start to put the pressure onto the tower. Try and finish that one off. Funnily enough, only one tower so far has gone down in this game. And of course, in favor of Unicorns of Love in that top lane. And speaking of the top lane, Vizzy Chang oh. come down. Power of Evil once again, throwing everything that he could onto Sia. And that will be turret number two. No one to defend that middle outer tower. Well, look at these builds, too. They're Morella Nomiconing each other, so the burst damage is so much higher because no one's building magic resist. All these turrets falling down as the pressure is just collapsing upon Lion. Unicorns of Love just stacking it up, pushing down. They're still not done here. They're chasing on towards Maple Street. There's going to be Dodo going in. I'm not sure what he's thinking. He thinks he's got the support, but just has not got enough. The fact that five members of Unicorns of Love are now stacked down his bottom lane. They could keep pushing on the tower. I think they're going to choose to back away. But they are now 7-2 up. And that is giving them a fairly hefty 6,000 gold lead. And it's the whole map that is working for Unicorns of Love right now. Even though the majority of the advantage will show kind of in the bottom lane with the 4-0 and zero Corky, that was only because Dodo tried to make a play happen by roaming as Alistair since the other lanes weren't necessarily going as planned. That made Maple Street very vulnerable. Vardags has had the benefit of being in basically a 2v1 to accumulate most of that advantage. And now since the other lanes have still worked so well because the Alistair roam hasn't uh, been super effective, is putting all the edges in Unicorns of Love's favor, especially if they can control the next dragon so they too can get the 8% attack damage and ability power. It might just be a snowball from there. Well, let's find out right now. Billy Sang is clearing out. We did see him get into a little bit of trouble on that exact brush earlier on, but was able to dash off to his mid laner and nothing was followed up after that. We also see that blue buff, of course, going over to see it. Fayak, in the meantime, just taking down the crab for that top lane. But honestly, that top lane is pretty much long gone if you uh, have been watching that one. Obviously, no Trinity Force just yet for Porky. On the other side, we see Dodo trying to make the play onto Vardax, and, well, he just head butts him away into the brush. He was actually hoping to interrupt the Valkyrie and hit him backwards because if you headbutt someone, it will cancel their current move order. But he got far enough away from Alistair that the headbutt sent him in the wrong direction and he ended up just looking kind of silly. Yeah, this is a bit of a shame. Okay, so Vizzy Chachi making his way down. Looks like they're grouping here. They're pushing towards the mid lane. This is a full team push, it seems, for Unicorns of Love. Everybody heading that way. Dragon is up in 15 seconds time, so almost certainly is going to be the focus target for Unicorns here. Yeah, Kiki's with that Raptor buff as well. It's when he gets the explanation mark above his head, he gets oracles for 10 seconds with which he can go and kill any ward. It only activates whenever he's in range of a ward. It is so, so, so effective. And honestly, I feel like Lion is just running into trouble if they try and contest this dragon because most of the vision control is in Unicorn's favor. And they basically just try and get another steal. Yeah, most if not all of the vision is in their favor at this point. There's a five-man Unicorns of Love team. Lee Sin is on the bottom side, but honestly, they're pretty much just body blocking it. That Q shouldn't be able to get through. And there is the dragon going over to Kikis. He finishes that one off. And now, what are they going to do? They need to deal with Irelia in the top lane, but there is Power of Evil flashing wow. in and gets See the you. kill. See you once again going down. And that leaves Power of Evil with three kills to his name. Porky's still pushing in that top lane but it needs to come back because his mid lane might be in trouble this is just going from bad to worse you would want the Aurelia to continue that extension but then because LeBlanc was picked off they have no way of defending these turrets complete control of the unicorns dominant stuff so tower down dragon down so it's one apiece in dragons gotta keep your counter on that one of course it does give that eight percent damage and ability power you see it's a fairly big buff, especially at the 20-minute mark when you start getting yeah. some of those items in. They can see, obviously, Death by Grasp now completed. So add it to that 100-plus AP, yeah. we an 8% stack is pretty big. We just got to start thinking about it in terms of absolute gold value right here. Yeah. Look at the AD carries. They're both sitting around 200 attack damage. You look at a longsword, it's 360 gold for 10 AD. 
which basically means every point of AD is 36 gold. If you're up at 200 gold and you're getting 8%, sorry, 200 attack damage, and you're gaining 8% extra of that, we're talking 16 to 20 AD at this point in the game, which is like 700 gold extra per AD carry in damage. Not even talking about everyone else who's benefiting from that ability power. So later in the game, that first dragon buff is immensely valuable. And it was Porky just head butted away, probably for his own god. And uh, we'll see how that one then opens up. Vizzy Chachi in the meantime is just pushing, pushing, pushing on this bottom lane. Randuin's on top of that Brutalizer now finished up for him, which means that Maple Street probably not going to be able to do too much damage, especially if he evolves or decides to just jump straight on top of him. Needs to be careful there. Maple Street just trying to get some farm back here, trying to Ooh, get his this. items back up. But Unicorns of Love, they're on the top side of the enemy jungle, going to be taking away as much as they can. We'll be making sure that their vision is in position as well. Vizzy Chachi, though, is going to get comboed here by Dodo. The question is, can they actually lock him down? The answer surely is no. There are three. Make that four of them lease in. Not not even bothering and look at yeah. that they're going to be pulling them away while they take down the inner turret in the top lane a lot of this is going to have to do with how well unicorns of love can close out this game because they're getting a ton of turret control but you see a lot of pushes actually stall at this turret this new laser turret really makes it hard to push unless you have some type of baron buff and now with nar out of the picture this could be a good fight well, Kikis is just about going down. They do manage to close him out, but here comes the teleport. Vizzy Chachi will join the fight. It's back to a four on five. Will Unicorns Love chase on towards this one? They're going to lock on towards Maple Street. Don't quite get the kill, though. Power of Evil putting the damage down. Thayak trying to run through there. He will actually get Power of Evil at the back side. They do manage to get a revenge kill. Thayak will go down. They're going to lock on towards the cow. Dodo is down. The laser beam burning away. Hillisang flashes through, taking the damage. Has he got enough? The laser's surely going to take him down. Pocky will get dropped. Sia comes in, gets one, gets two. Can he get the third? Busy Chachi runs away. And well, Lion Gaming hang on with a great defense, but just a sloppy attack from Unicorns of Love. Yeah, I'm sorry to say, that is exactly what you don't do with a big turret lead this early into the game. Diving that turret without the benefits of multiple dragon buffs or a baron for really empowered minions is dumb because there's so much that happens to you that is bad. The amount of damage that Hillsang took on Braum, he basically died to the turret right there while still not being effective. They gave a ton of kills back right there. And this, wasn't it a seven or 8,000 gold lead before that? The fact that they actually lost a fight and are giving some critical items now back to the side of Lion kind of opens up a window for Lion to make a potential comeback. Well, let's see what they try and do to get that comeback in action. Next dragon will be up in less than two minutes' time. And we've already seen the first stack of dragons coming up. Oh, I think that actually is going to safeguard away there. On towards Dodo. Flash, though, from Kikis. That was very aggressive. Fire just flashed instantly away from it. Let's talk about, because we focus on the first stack of dragon here, what comes afterwards and how important are they if you look, you know, in comparison to the other stacks? Not nearly as important if we can say that. The second dragon is almost an afterthought in your path to getting more dragons. Because the third dragon with 5% move speed is really good. 15% damage, bonus damage to minions and monsters is okay. It helps you take Baron faster. It'll wave clear a little bit better. And if you're defending, it's actually somewhat useful because it's very much easier to wave clear. But compared in relative power, I would call it not even comparable. It's like a quarter is great as the first buff. So getting it is nice, but it mainly just empowers them to take other things and stack up the dragon higher and higher. If I were Lion, I wouldn't care about the second dragon. I would hope that Unicorn of Love thinks I'm going to care about it and farm elsewhere. Yeah, maybe opens up an opportunity elsewhere. See it, look and see if he can try and poke someone down. Vizzy Chachi is the focus. Does still burn half the hit points off him, and he is the tankiest. Remember, you can see Giant Spell and Randian's Omen in there, so he's got over 2,000 plus hit points that was just burnt away there. It is going to be 30 seconds on the timer. They're going to push this bottom wave in. Of course, there is the final inner turret in this bottom lane, which it looks like is going to be the focus. And Lion are just not responding to this. They are off towards the middle and top here. So it looks like they're going to try and fast push that mid turret, but they can't. They've got to react. They're going to get down here, but they're too late. That tower is gone. Yeah, definitely seems that way. Lee Cinerelia too far away. It may end up being six turrets to one right here, which then, if you're Lion Gaming, you're hoping Unicorn of Love thinks the dive will go better next time because that's pretty much the only way Lion has been winning fights is when they have a monster laser turret helping them out 
Unicorn of Love actually should take this a little bit slow. Get the Dragon, ward up around Baron, get the Baron, and then push with their Empowered Minions. Second stack coming in then. And that Dragon for Unicorns of Love and approaching a 10,000 gold lead as they're going to try and get in here. And, well, that will be an easy pickup. They will now back away. Looks like it's time to spend a bit of that gold. Not been back home and shopping since they lost that dive on the top turret. Actually, Thayat going to be spotted here by Vizzy Chachi and takes a bit of damage for his pleasure. But that won't be too much to write home about. And Unicorns of Love now about pushing out these lanes and moving into the next phase where, honestly, after 26 minutes with such a big gold lead, they're thinking about how to close out the game at this point. As well they should be. I think they lost their minds a little bit when they did that turret dive, but they know that they should be playing to their strengths right here. Corky in particular, with the Bloodthirster and Sorcerer Shoes, the missiles are hitting for insane amounts of damage against a relatively squishy lineup if he can weave the missiles past the Alistair. So vision control, poke, and maybe some baiting around the Baron is what they need. And if they can use... I actually haven't gotten to talk about Nar that much, and one of the reasons he's so strong, A, his lane is great, but B, when he is close to transforming, he demands respect. Because if a Nar can actually get in on your team and land his ultimate in a good way, the team fight is over, even if you were down a huge amount of gold. So Visichachi needs to have his rage management in a good place, show that actually he's about to transform, and use that power to push Lion off of positional spots. It seems that Unicorns of Love are going to gather, they're going to push his mid lane, but Lion are in position to defend this time, so it could well be another siege situation. You can see that Maple Tree has actually picked up a pot. This is something we haven't talked about yet. There's obviously the new pots that were introduced in 420. What do you always go for as an AD carry? Because there's actually kind of two that favor the AD carry yeah. right now. I would call them elixirs. Elixirs, of course. But no, uh, yeah. I agree. They're way more expensive. I'm yeah. actually not sure exactly when people are going to be building them in games. A huge amount of poke put off by LeBlanc there. Uh, I personally think for AD carries, the Wrath one that gives you attack damage and life steal back, basically, uh, is far and away the best one for AD carries. Outside of that, I think there's a lot of choices, but that's a, a much longer discussion that we may have on the analyst test clear. Yes. yes Never know. Indeed. That's the beauty here as well, that whilst we've got some idea of what's going to happen, what's going to be bought, what, which way games are going to be won, there's still, it's still open to interpretation by these teams. Yep. We don't know what they've been practicing in secret for the most part. We may be seeing some funky ideas coming out from these teams, especially as the tournament progresses and we get towards the later stages. Yeah, and we don't know what's good either. The teams don't even know exactly what's good. Right now we're seeing the Lee Sin versus the Sin Zhao. Maybe the next team will play Nunu and Vive. Maybe we'll see a lot of these different choices. Lee Sin, I think, is always going to be relevant because of his ganking presence. Sin Zhao, maybe we'll see how his late game transition is since he does have that stacking devour which is giving him more and more magic damage on hits throughout the game but it's a big learning experience for everyone which really kind of adds a special little flavor to i am san jose here i well, don't feel like warwick's ever going to get through a band phase <laughs> well you never know he has a few times at og yet, so maybe it's man, possible i'm on like a 10 game winning streak and if i'm on that kind of winning streak then you know there's something uh, <laughs> strong about yeah i think i went like 10 1 6 with him i was like hey, i shouldn't be playing this well <laughs> There's definitely something wrong here. Uh, but yeah, look, something I actually interested in is the fact that obviously Nar did get through. Nar's been pretty heavily banned over in uh, Korea in the last week. Was actually surprised to see it through, but also moving away from the fact that there is obviously an Aurelia again, so it's that bruisery top lane. We kind of expect to see the double mages making a strong return in this patch, surely. A little bit. I mean, magic resistance is a little bit harder to mass early since you are just upgrading null magic items. When you get full builds, it's only down a uh, very little bit. It's it's going to be a very interesting thing here. In a sense, Unicorns of Love does have a fair bit of magic damage. Nar does very mixed damage. Corky does very mixed damage. Even Sin Zhao in this case, because his Devourer is doing magic damage, is mixed in some way. So they're just making it relatively hard to itemize against. No matter what, you're going to have to balance your damage in some way. And with the Corky pick, double AP actually would have been very poor. A lot of damage coming out. I say a lot of damage. He uses full combo. It didn't particularly do a lot of damage. Just Porky here. Gonna be caught out by Vizzy Chachi. And that's before he actually turns into Mega Nar. So that's just showing you how far ahead he is at this point. How much damage this Nar has. And was also kind of expecting a Nar ban to be coming out. That seems to be really 
a common thing right now. Don't want Nar to go yeah. through. Maybe we'll see the change in that second game. Uh -oh. But right now, the Unicorns are looking Ooh, to get in. Nice Missing dodge. the stun there onto Maple Street. Or, yeah, he at least Flank. dodged out the side. So that leaves them still pretty healthy to defend here. Unicorns of Love, I have to say, for the last, what, five, six minutes, they've not actually done a lot on the map. No, and I think that was a big missed opportunity, actually. They had some pretty decent pink wards up, some good scouting wards, and they spent like 3,000 of their damage killing the crab. They could have used that on Baron and realized when there was no one coming for them, they actually could have just finished it. They're, they had so much control here. If they want a little bit more safety, I could actually foresee Kikis using Smite on the Raptor camp to get the ward notification, and then just running around the entire river to just guarantee that it's clear before they actually decide to start the Baron buff. But they're taking this so slow, they're probably going to go for Dragon number three first. And they are still building up a gold advantage, so it's they're up to 8,000 gold now, and they are coming around trying to steal away that red buff. Maple Street wants to get a grip on it. He's got to be careful. He doesn't get locked up here. Hillisang is running defense. Uh-oh, teleport coming behind. Maple Street, run for your life. They are chasing. They are catching. Kikis is on him, gets the three-talent strike and bounces him in the air to his doom. And that was a nice lockup. There's the dragon, perfectly uh -oh. timed. And that will be the third stack for Unicorns of Love. They just need to try and take something from this. They should not try and fight for it. Instead, they're not even going to go for it. They're just going to push that bottom line and go for the inhib turret. Yeah, well, they know there's no AD carries, so this is a slightly more well-informed dive if they can get there. They also know they have cut off a lot of the Lion reinforcements. Taking this with no enemy champion reinforcements should be easy. Yeah, I think this one may be going down. Was actually tanked up there by Busy Chachi. Stun goes over, but it's on to Alistair. This turret is surely going to go down. Kick is actually diving in. Fire got hit there by the DFG. Was used coming out of Power of Evil. He will once again get a stun onto Dodo, taking a lot less damage because of that ultimate running, but inevitably taken out by Power of Evil, and that will be the inhibitor going down as well. Solid push by the Unicorns of Love. And it was all started by that catch in the jungle. So even though they were taking it slowly, because they were actually prioritizing dragon control instead of baron control, the ward coverage within the red jungle of Lion Gaming created that catch opportunity. Once Maple Street was down, everything was pretty easy. And you add on top of that that they have the bottom side inhibitor down, which is actually the best inhibitor in the game, in my opinion, to have killed if you were going for baron. It requires a full-time defender down in the bottom lane, which is so far removed from that Baron Pit, it should make it pretty easy pickings. So third stack of Dragon now for Unicorns of Love, just the one for Lion Gaming after that excellent steal early on by Thyax. So that, of course, gives them a fairly sizable advantage. I want to talk about Nar for a moment, actually, because he's obviously he wasn't allowed through Worlds so far. And honestly, in, in Freak's defense, we had a... A heated argument about Nar back at Worlds and like talking about his viability. And he was really insisting that he wasn't in there. Today. Well, yeah, because yeah, you know, I'm missing, him. I'm missing yeah. him. That's what it is. Uh oh, Fire caught out. He's going to run away. The ulti is not going to be enough. That was a pretty early ulti from Power of Evil. Didn't have all these balls on the table, so wasn't able to do the damage. But going back to Nar. What I want to talk about is the fact that obviously we were talking about his, his viability, the, the fact that he was going to get played, and we're like, no, he's a little bit too much of a random factor. Porky's going to be able to teleport away from this one. He is gone. But I'm quite surprised. Now he's gone through, he's become so strong in this tanky format that it actually has become a, a pretty much a staple ban now. Yeah. So what are we looking at uh, now? What is the powers and what needs changing? Well, he's got pretty much the best ultimate in the game when he can use it. Yeah. Because he can five-man stun into a wall and just basically wombo a team with tank items. It's just a lot of combined power. Obviously, his laning phase is ridiculous in a lot of ways. And then his team fight potential is strong with the people who know how to manage his rage as Baron gets taken by Unicorns of Love. That's actually one of the biggest changes that uh, have propelled him into relevancy is when he was first released, it was much more difficult to manage his rage properly. There were some tweaks to that system. I don't know the exact specifics, but it is easier for players to manipulate the right circumstance to get Big Gnar when they need it. And that's really what these players have mastered, and that's why he's a pick now. And 
doing pretty well, I'd say, for Unicorns mm. of Love this game. Over 300 CS, 205. And with that Baron buff on, Unicorns of Love are surely going to be looking to close out this game. They're having to deal here, Alliance, with the Super Minions down on that bottom side. And this is going to be the turret going down. I'm not sure what they can do to really hold on. And we'll see if they even just get dove on it. And there we go. Kick is actually going in. Thayak taking a lot of damage, but Dodo actually getting in for a good pulverize here. They've done good damage overall. Busy Chachi is pretty low and they still see kick is low there at the backside there is the shutdown on to see they lose maple street at least sang is also pretty deep here between the two <laughs> nexus turrets trying to get onto dodo but they're going to go in and close out the game yeah the nexus turrets are going to fall it looks like unicorns of love will close out game one within 36 minutes and a solid solid performance honestly they never really looked like they were going to lose that one they had full control and a very good opening performance in their first stadium event, honestly. Yeah, this is There was a lot of pressure on them coming into this. Qualified for the European LCS. Weren't sure what this team was going to be like. But so far, they've got game one in the belt. It is a best of three, so we're not done yet. A few jitters once they had the big lead. The one failed dive, but they recovered quite well. I'm looking at Lion Gaming right here, and they have a fair bit of work to do. Quite honestly, I think they were the weakest expected team to arrive here, so it's always tough to walk in, be expected to not do very well, and to get kind of beaten up in the first game. So, NAR getting let through. I think there's some power things they can adjust coming into the next game, but we're going to have to see. That was a tough loss. Yeah, I think that's part of the problem that Vizzy Chachi, we've seen it time and time again. He just plays anything that he feels like mm. playing poppy ban here we saw him as one of the first <laughs> to bring out swain when we think a little bit further back as well so always going to be hard to decide exactly what they're going to go ban in there yeah. of course game two will be coming up here soon but we're going to go over to the analysis desk where they're going to break down game number one thank you very much gentlemen and uh, what a game it was